At noontide, 16 years ago, I sat in my study in the parsonage of the Congregational Church at Newton, a suburb of the beautiful city of Sydney, Australia. My heart was very heavy, for I had been visiting the sick and dying beds of more than 30 of my flock, and I had cast the dust to its kindred dust into more than 40 graves in a few weeks. Where, oh where, was he who used to heal his suffering children? No prayer for healing seemed to reach his ear, and yet I knew his hand had not been shortened. Still, it did not save from death, even those for whom there is so much in life to live for God and others. Strong men, fathers, good citizens, and more than all true faithful Christians sickened with a putrid fever, suffered nameless agonies, passed into a delirium, sometimes with convulsions, and then died. And oh, what aching voids were left in many a widowed, orphaned heart. Then there were many homes where one by one the little children, the youths and the maidens were stricken, and after hard struggling with the foul disease, they too lay cold and dead. It seemed sometimes as if I could almost hear the triumphant mockery of fiends ringing in my ear, whilst I spoke to the bereaved ones the words of Christian hope and consolation. Disease, the foul offspring of its father Satan and its mother sin, was defiling and destroying the earthly temples of God's children, and there was no deliverer. And there I sat with sorrow bowed head for my afflicted people, until the bitter tears came to relieve my burning heart. Then I prayed for some message, and oh, how I longed to hear some words from him who wept and sorrowed for the suffering long ago, the man of sorrows and sympathies. And then the words of the Holy Ghost, inspired in Acts 10.38, stood before me all radiant with light, revealing Satan as the defiler and Christ as the healer. My tears were wiped away. My heart was strong. I saw the way of healing, and the door thereto was opened wide, and so I said, God help me now to preach that word to all dying round, and tell them how tis Satan still defiles, and Jesus still delivers, for he is just the same today. A loud ring and several loud raps at the outer door, a rush of feet and then at my door two panting messengers who said, Oh come at once, Mary is dying, come and pray. With such a feeling as a shepherd has, who hears that his sheep are being torn from the fold by a cruel wolf, I rushed from my house, ran hatless down the street, and entered the room of the dying maiden. There she lay groaning, grinding her clenched teeth in the agony of the conflict with the destroyer, the white froth mingled with her blood oozing from her pain-distorted mouth. I looked at her and then my anger burned. Oh, I thought, for some sharp sword of heavenly temper keen to slay this cruel foe, who is strangling that lovely maiden like an invisible serpent, tightening his deadly coils for a final victory. In a strange way it came to pass. I found the sword I needed was in my hands, and in my hand I hold it still, and never will I lay it down. The doctor, a good Christian man, was quietly walking up and down the room, sharing the mother's pain and grief. Presently, he stood at my side and said, Sir, are not God's ways mysterious? Instantly, the sword was flashing in my hand, the spirit sword, the word of God. God's way, I said, pointing to the scene of the conflict. How dare you, Dr. K, call that God's way of bringing his children home from earth to heaven? No, sir, that is the devil's work. And it is time we called on him who came to destroy the work of the devil to slay that deadly foul destroyer, and to save the child. Can you pray, doctor? Can you pray the prayer of faith that saves the sick? At once, offended at my words, my friend was changed in saying, You are too much excited, sir. Tis is best to say, God's will be done. He left the room. Excited? The word was quite inadequate, for I was almost frenzied with divinely imparted anger and hatred of that foul destroyer disease which was doing Satan's will. It is not so, I exclaimed, no will of God sends such cruelty, and I shall never say God's will be done to Satan's works, which God's own Son came to destroy, and this is one of them. Oh, how the word of God was burning in my heart. Jesus of Nazareth went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And was not God with me? And was not Jesus there, and all his promise true? I felt that it was even so, and turning to the mother I inquired, Why did you send for me? To which she answered, 
Do pray, oh pray for her that God may raise her up. And so we prayed. What did I say? It may be that I cannot now recall the words without mistake, but words are in themselves of small importance. The prayer of faith may be a voiceless prayer, a simple heartfelt look of confidence into the face of Christ. At such a moment, words were few, but they mean much, for God is looking at the heart. Still, I can remember much of that prayer until this day, and asking God to aid, I will endeavor to recall it. I cried, Our Father, help, and Holy Spirit, teach me how to pray. Plead thou for us, O Jesus, Savior, Healer, Friend, our Advocate with the Father. Hear and heal, Eternal One. From all disease and death, deliver this sweet child of thine. I rest upon the word. We claim the promise now. The word is true. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Then heal her now. The word is true. I am the Lord. I change not. Unchanging God. Then prove thyself the healer now. The word is true. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And I believe, and I lay hands in Jesus' name on her, and claim this promise now. The word is true. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. Trusting in thee alone, I cry, O save her now, for Jesus' sake, amen. And lo, the maid lay still in sleep, so deep and sweet that the mother said in a low whisper, Is she dead? No, I answered in a whisper lower still, Mary will live. The fever is gone. She is perfectly well and sleeping as an infant sleeps. Smoothing the long dark hair from her now peaceful brow and feeling the steady pulsation of her heart in cool, moist hands, I saw that Christ had heard and that once more as long ago in Peter's house, he touched her and the fever left her. Turning to the nurse, I said, Get me at once, please, a cup of cocoa and several slices of bread and butter. Beside the sleeping maid, we sat quietly and almost silently until the nurse returned. And then I bent over her and, snapping my fingers, said, Mary. Instantly, she woke, smiled, and said, Oh, sir, when did you come? I have slept so long. Then stretching out her arms to meet her mother's embrace, she said, Mother, I feel so well. And hungry, too, I said pouring some of the cocoa in a saucer and offering it to her when cooled by my breath. Yes, hungry too, she answered with a little laugh, and drank and ate again and yet again until all was gone. In a few minutes she fell asleep, breathing easily and softly. Quietly thanking God, we left her bed and went to the next room where the brother and sister also lay sick of the same fever. With those two we also prayed and they were healed. The following day all three were well, and in a week or so they brought to me a little letter and a little gift of gold, two sleeve links with my monogram which I wore for many years. As I went away from the home where Christ as the healer had been victorious, I could not but have somewhat in my heart of the triumphant song that rang through heaven. And yet I was not a little amazed at my own strange doings, and still more at my discovery that he is just the same today. And this is the story of how I came to preach the gospel of healing through faith in Jesus. John Alexander Dowie, Leaves of Healing, February 15, 1895